I'm Kepler 186 F and Exoplanet I spin. Let's learn more about me and where I have been. Kepler 186 system is about 500 light years from Earth. I'd like to tout. In the constellation of Cygnus is where I reside. Along with four companion planets, we don't try to hide. Kepler 186 is an M dwarf star. Half the size and mass of your sun by far. I orbit my star in a Goldilocks zone where liquid could pool on the surface, don't you know? In a habitable zone, life might just exist on a planet like me. I'll tell you why this is. My distance from my star and my size and my mass are close to the same as the Earth's. We're almost twins with planetary class. This is why in Scientists were so excited with my discovery By the Kepler telescope and the transit method To spot my shadow you see and where I was headed I'm Kepler 186 F and exoplanet I spin Let's learn more about me and where I have been Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. My name is Kepler 16b, an extrasolar planet on the scene. In the constellation of Cygnus, orbiting Kepler 16. Discovered on the 15th day. In the month of September In the year of 2011 I became a extrasolar planet member Lawrence R. Doyle did discover me An American scientist using transit photometry Scientists noticed the dimming of one of the system stars even when the other star was not eclipsing it, which raised the bar. I was found in the constellation Cygnus that day, a northern constellation on the plain of the Milky Way. I am 200 light years from the Earth you live on, orbiting a binary star system you learn in this song the host star system i am now known to orbit is kepler 16 a binary star system it's legit eclipsing binary star systems are as defined as two stars that are gravitationally bound and in orbit around each other how bizarre I orbit my host star with a period of 229 days shorter than an Earth year you love. I'm a Saturn mass planet which is consisting of half gas, half rock and ice as I sing. Lawrence believed this is the best measured planet outside the solar system and now you know where I reside. My name is Kepler 16b, an extrasolar planet on the scene in the constellation of cygnus orbiting kepler 16. what's the difference between meteors asteroids and comets let's take a look at how they travel and form i am a comet which is a body of ice also rock and dust to be precise, I can be several miles in diameter, mostly ranging from 10 to 100 kilometers for sure. I do orbit the sun just like planets and asteroids do. I have a very elongated orbit, it's true. Comets materialized 4.5 billion years ago from dust and gas. Now you know these icy particles join which does force them into one, as you can see. When comets pass through the inner solar system, its ice warms, releasing a trail of gas and dust. That's how my tail forms. I'm a meteoroid. I am found in space.
space I range inside some from a small asteroid to a small dust grain Meteoroids are thought to form from the collision of asteroids In the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter's void I become a meteor when I burn up in the atmosphere That's when you see a shooting star or a fireball near If I survive this burning of entry through your atmosphere And hit the ground, I'm called a meteorite I share I'm an asteroid, I'm sometimes called a minor planet to some I'm a rocky leftover from the formation of the solar system I do orbit the sun, I do range in size From a dust particle to 600 miles wide I probably consist of clay and silicon rocks, you know I'm dark in appearance and ancient as far as the solar system goes The difference between us is quite substantial We will tell you what this is so you understand in full A meteoroid is a space rock The size of a grain of dust or a small asteroid But we can't talk A comet is an object made of ice and dust How fun! Often with a gas halo and tail that orbits the sun An asteroid is an ancient rock from the formation Of the place you live called the solar system What's the difference between meteors, asteroids, and comets? Let's take a look at how they travel in form Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I'm known as WHL0137-LS, also known as Arendell, I do confess. I'm the earliest and most distant known star, replacing the previous farthest known star, Icarus by far. Arendell comes from Token Silmarillion, the mariner who sails the sky, creating morning again and again. My beloved star shines bright in dark places, when all other lights are above. You'll see my light traces My discovery was made by the Hubble Space Telescope Due to gravitational lensing, my observations came full scope When looking into the constellation of Cetus The Hubble Space Telescope, when observing, did not miss My host, Alex WHL 0137-ZB1 Was nicknamed Sunrise Arc and spiraled as it spun If you look from Earth, I'm approximately the Distance of 28 billion light years away, I'm a record holder, you'll love. I'm almost twice as distant as a Chris, the old record holder, but now I am farthest and I'm much older. My star type is a hot blue star with a mass between 50 and 100 times that of the sun in your system. See, stars with such a high mass as mine do not live very long. Astronomers say I exploded into a supernova you learned in the song. I'm thought to the James Webb Observatory we now know I'm either a binary or trinary individual star system that glows I'm known as WHL 0137-LS also known as Arendell I do confess I'm the earliest and most distant known star replacing the previous farthest known star Icarus by far What's Saturn's great white spot? Or it's northern storm. Let's take a closer look to find out where the storm did form. Saturn's great white spot is somewhat a periodic storm. At 28.5 year intervals, it's kind of its norm. The storm happens about once in every Saturn year. That's about 29.4 Earth years, just so we are clear. When the storm does erupt, it shoots waves up into the stratosphere of Saturn, making it misbehave. When this happened, a spacecraft, Nicassini, happened to be orbiting Saturn that showed Earth what it now sees. A couple of days after NASA first spotted the storm on Saturn, its winds had sheared the storm in both directions as it formed. At this point, the Great Wet Spot had wrapped all the way across the planet. That is a fact. The storm only wrapped around Saturn's northern hemisphere. What if this took place on Earth? Of this I will share. If the storm acted the same on Earth as shown here, it would wrap around the entire northern hemisphere. The storm would last for a very long time with no 
escape for humans as you've learned in this rhyme if this happened on earth it would be like going from the cold winters in alaska to the heights of the mojave in the summer sun this storm on saturn can almost be as large as the earth at 6200 miles wide it's incredible let's move forward what's saturn's great white spot or its northern storm let's take a closer look to find out where the storm did form Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. What are the Milankovitch cycles and their role in Earth's climate change? Let's take a look at the three cycles and how they rearrange. The Milankovitch cycles are also called Earth's axis cycles. Now let's learn about them all. The Earth's been orbiting for 4.5 billion years, you know, around the sun on its axis, which often changes, I will show. Earth makes changes in its orbital shape, axis, and orbital plane. These changes are called the Milankovitch cycles let me explain the Milankovitch cycles include the three listed here let's see how they affect climate change on Earth's big sphere the first cycle is called eccentricity which has to do with the shape of Earth's orbit over time you'll see every a hundred thousand years the Earth's orbital path does change due to the pull of gravity from Jupiter and Saturn I explain Earth's orbit varies between 0.034 almost a perfect circle 2.058 which is slightly elliptical the earth's closest approach to the sun is called perihelion and its farthest distance is called aphelion this cycle creates a 25 percent difference in solar radiation between the southern and northern hemispheres in all nations obliquities the second cycle will discuss on earth's orbital run it's the angle earth's axis of rotations tilted traveling around the sun obliquities is why the earth has seasons with respect to its orbital plane this cycle is important to earth's climate change it tilts 22.1 24.5 degrees over a 41,000 year cycle called obliquity as obliquity decreases it gradually helps make milder seasons you see increasing ice cover at high latitudes to help reflect the sun's energy precession is the third cycle in which the earth hasn't avoided it has to do with the direction earth's axis of rotation is pointed when the earth spins on its axis it starts to wobble it's true due to the tidal forces caused by the gravitational influences of the sun and the moon this cycle of axial precession spans about 25,000 years which makes a seasonal contrast more extreme in one of the two hemispheres all three of these cycles react with each other in such a way it changes earth in many ways within climate change what are the Milankovitch cycles and their role in earth's climate change let's take a look at the three cycles and how they rearrange in saturn's north pole there's something strange going on there's a six-sided jet stream shaped like a hexagon the six-sided hexagon storm is in my north pole it has a hurricane eye that is the center which looks like a hole the eye of this hurricane is 50 times larger with force than an average hurricane eye that exists on earth the storm's about 20,000 miles in diameter which is twice the size of the great red spot on jupiter Atmospheric flows deep within Saturn create large and small cyclones. The smaller storms interact with the larger systems you should know. And as a result, they effectively pitch the eastern jet and confine it to the top of Saturn, the planet. The pinching process warps the stream into a hexagonal shape that will keep spinning on until an unknown date. Wind speeds of the inner ring are moving ultra fast at speeds about 340 miles per hour as they pass the clouds at the very center of my pole are spinning rapidly almost twice as fast as its planet saturn that's me the direction of its storm's rotation is counterclockwise the storm is locked in place in my north pole it resides a hurricane on earth typically lasts a week you see but this hexagon storm has been here for decades and possibly centuries a cassini explored Saturn for 13 years on September 15, 2006.
2017 it plunged into Saturn's atmosphere. Cassini's spacecraft took pictures of the hexagon storm with power. A movie was created from seven images taken over five hours. In Saturn's North Pole, there's something strange going on. There's a six-sided jet stream shaped like a hexagon. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. One of the brightest comet scenes C slash 199501 I was designated formally I'm Comet Halbop One of the brightest comets seen In 1995 was my discovery I was discovered by an astronomer Alan Hale and Thomas Bob The astronomer amateur I was discovered before I was visible to the naked eye on July 23rd in 1995. Astronomers believe I originated from beyond Neptune, from the Oort cloud, which is 2,000 to 100,000 AU. My elliptical orbit is long, they can take around 200 years or even thousands to orbit the sun, just to be clear. I was one of the most widely observed comets in the 20th century in four men decades one of the brightest seen i passed perihelion in 1997 but it is unsure when i'll reach my aphelion when i was visible to the naked eye for humans it was so much fun i was observed with the naked eye for about 18 months i may have had a near collision with jupiter in early june 2215 bc i'm coming help up one of the brightest comets seen C slash 199501 I was designated formally I'm Comet Halbop One of the brightest comets seen In 1995 was my discovery I have several types of tails That trail Let me tell you about all of them To impress they don't fail One is called the bright dust tail Created by the reflection of the sunlight From the streaming from the comet second is called the ion tail it is more faint made up of electrically charged atoms i do hell i was discovered with a rare third tail you'll see called the sodium tail trailing from the back of me i do have a nucleus which is estimated to be about 30 to 40 kilometers across me i am the first comet that astronomers did detect the noble gas argon I reflect. I'm Comet Halbop, one of the brightest comets seen. C slash 199501. I was designated formally. I'm Comet Halbop, one of the brightest comets seen. In 1995 was my discovery. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37B. Orbiting Kepler 37, that's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. My discovery site is Kepler Space Observatory on the 20th in the month of February. The Kepler Space Telescope did make my discovery along with two other planets, Kepler 37, C and D. To date, I am the smallest planet. System I am found. I have a radius slightly bigger than your moon, but I'm slightly smaller than Mercury. You've learned this in this tune. I'm classified as an exoplanet, also a sub Earth. This means that I'm substantially less massive than Venus and Earth. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February. 2013 now let's learn more about me i do have a diameter of 2400 miles i'm likely a rocky planet with a solid surface though i have a surface temperature around 700k the k does mean calvin in the international
national system of units today. I orbit my G star, it's called Kepler 37. Here it's similar to your sun, as you can see when it did appear. I orbit my parent star at 9.3 million miles away with an orbital period every 13 days. If you're looking for me in the dark of the night sky, you can find me in the constellation Lyra. Please stop by. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. The Apollo mission brought humans to the moon. The first flight was in the 1960s. We hope to go back soon. The Apollo missions were a NASA program and set a major space flight milestone for all humans. The Apollo program was conceived. 1960 during Dwight D. Eisenhower's presidency. Then the Apollo program started in 1961 and consisted of 11 total space flights and missions. Apollo was a NASA program that had American astronauts. Out of the 11 space flights, six of those resulted in moonwalks. The first four flights tested the equipment used in the Apollo program to see if astronauts could be sent to the moon and successful with Earth orbits numbering 10. Apollo 9 tested the lunar module in orbit in 69. The crew orbited the Earth 151 times. A rehearsal of the moon landing was in 69 on Apollo 10. It was a great success with 31 orbits around the Earth's bend. Apollo 11 was the first land and walk on the moon in 69. Neil Armstrong was the first to step foot on the moon for humankind. In 1969, Apollo also successful instead of ending in doom. All astronauts survived on Apollo 13, you can see, after an oxygen tank explosion in 1970. The Apollo 14 mission launched in 1970, one which marked the first landing in the lunar highlands. This mission was done. The first use of the Apollo rover happened in 71 as well. This launched on Apollo 15 mission and it went real swell. Apollo 16 in 1972 astronauts explored the lunar highlands this is true in 72 apollo 17 was launched and nothing went wrong this marks the last walk on the moon since then no one has gone you can visit space someday and our earth you will see or you can visit a different planet and make history the apollo mission brought humans to the moon the first flight was in the 1960s we hope to go back soon around 28 million light years from earth there is a whirlpool galaxy its name is messier 51 that's what i'm part of you see I am the first exoplanet found outside your Milky Way galaxy. Since I'm located outside of your galaxy, an exoplanet's what you'd call me. In the constellation of Canis Venatici, you'll find a whirlpool galaxy. It goes by the name of Messier 51, or call it M51, it's easy. Inside M51 is 
is the sun like star 28 million light years from earth the star orbits around a neutron star or a black hole now let's move forth i orbit this sun like star i am a saturn like planet they have found i am classified as an extra planet Outside the Milky Way, I was crowned Out of the thousands of exoplanets found Inside the Milky Way galaxy I am the first extra planet ever found This is a big deal, you'd have to agree Researchers use NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory to detect the dimming of x-rays from an x-ray binary an x-ray binary is a system where a sun-like star is in orbit around a black hole or a neutron star i do admit it's quite profound i was discovered based on transits but what exactly does that mean it's what happens when a planet crosses in front of a star blocking its light it's how i'm seen this neutron star or black hole is pulling in gas from my star closely orbiting this material pole becomes superheated then it glows in x-rays it's out of this world that's a thing I was discovered by the astronomers under Rosandi Stefano, you see. The name I was given by my founders is M51 ULS 1B. Around 28 million light years from Earth, there is a whirlpool galaxy. Its name is Messier 51. That's what I'm part of, you see. I am the first exoplanet found outside your Milky Way galaxy. Since I'm located outside of your galaxy, an exoplanet's what you'd call me. Surrounded by a circumstellar disk My name is AG100546 I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disk From the constellation of Mosca Now hear this My name is HG100546 I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet I'm a star with a circumstellar disk From the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU Now this I'm found in the constellation of Muska Hear this I'm a B-type star with an exoplanet that does orbit I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see It is HD 100546B I'm HD 100546B I was discovered at the Very Large Telescope in Chile Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf Located in the disk around my star on my orbital course I'm a gas giant exoplanet, they know this for sure My mass is 752 Jupiters One orbit takes 249 years around my star I'm 53 AU away from my star, that is far My discovery was announced in 2014 That's all I have to report, that's enough about me I am back again, it's HD 100546 Let me tell you a bit more about my disk My circumstellar disk was observed by the Hubble telescope Which should spiral patterns, what they mean, no one really knows my disc is fairly flat with a circular shape With a wide gap thought to be carved by my exoplanet How great! When looking at the night sky try to locate The constellation of Muska But you have to look late 
I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc. My name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc from the constellation of Musca. Now hear this. I am Bernardinelli, Bernstein, a large or cloud comet, also called C slash 2014 UN271 as of yet. I'm on my way to orbit your sun on my orbital run. Let's learn when and where I will appear in my perihelion. The first image of me was discovered in October of 2014. I was 29 AU or 4.3 billion kilometers from the sun. I was barely seen. That's about as far as Neptune's orbit. The furthest a comet has been discovered. That's where my presence was uncovered. Discovered by astronomers Pedro Bernardinelli and Gary Bernstein. With the Dark Energy Survey or DES, they had found me. In archival images from the DES at the CTI Observatory, which is located in the Coquimbo region in the country of Chile. I'm the largest or cloud comet, the biggest you humans ever saw. I'm estimated between 63 and 93 miles across, unless I thought. What is this or cloud anyway? Surrounding your sun It's a spherical layer of icy objects Outside the orbit of Neptune's run During 2021 I will approach your solar system sun At a distance of 19.5 or 20.8 AU On my run Let's take a look at the images here To see my orbit around the sun my perihelion and aphelion are explained to you just for fun. Perihelion means my closest approach to your sun as you see here. And aphelion is my furthest orbit from your sun that had just appeared. My closest approach to Earth will be made in 2031. Which is just outside of Saturn's orbit That's my perihelion My orbital period is about 4.5 million years My aphelion distance is about 54,000 AU So I hear I am sad to say that I won't enter your inner solar system I may be wide but you won't see me with your naked eye and that's no fun. I am five and a half times as long as Olympus months. The solar system tallest mountain found on Mars. You've learned this in this song. I am classified as a comet. But what exactly is that? I'm a cosmic snowball of rock dust and different types of frozen gas. I am Bernardinelli, Bernstein, a large or cloud comet, also called C slash 2014, UN271 as of yet. I'm on my way to orbit your sun on my orbital run. Let's learn when and where I will appear in my perihelion. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. My name is 55. Can create also known as Jansen, I'm a super Earth you see. I'm an exoplanet in the orbit of my host star named Copernicus. Here's what they know about me this far. I was discovered in the month of August on the 30th day in the year of 2004 I convey. I was nicknamed the Diamond Planet due to research that suggests I have a carbon rich composition underneath my surface. I was discovered by a female astronomer. She goes by the name of Barbara MacArthur. The detection method used by astronomers to find me is a method called radial velocity. My host star Copernicus from 55 can create is from Earth a 40 light year trip away. My host star is a G-type star similar to your sun. You know I'm 0.015 
they know about me this far My mass is about 8.08 that of the earth I take .7 days to complete one orbit of my star for what that's worth I belong to the constellation called Cancer Here is an example of what it looks like Of this I am sure In 2016 in the month of February NASA's Hubble telescope detected two gases on me Those gases were hydrogen
I'm an extrasolar planet named 51 Pegasi B. Discovered in 1995 at Oak Province Observatory. I'm an extrasolar planet named 51 Pegasi B. I am formally named Dimidium. Yeah, that is me. I'm 2002 MS4. A large classical Kuiper Belt object, let me tell you more. I'm 2002. MS4 I belong to the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune, I'm sure I'm 2002 MS4 A large classical Kuiper Belt object, let me tell you more I'm 2002 MS4 I belong to the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune, I'm sure My name's 2002 MS4 I was discovered in 2002 by those who do explore I was discovered by two top astronomers at the Palomar Observatory when passing I was a blur Chad Trujillo and Michael Brown were the legendary astronomers who did track me down in 2019 I was recorded for fun at 46.5 AU from your sun I'll reach perihelion which means I'm closest to your sun in the year 2122 on my orbital run I'm 2002 MS4 a large classical Kuiper belt object let me tell you more I'm 2002 MS4 I belong to the Kuiper belt beyond Neptune I'm sure my estimated size and diameter is around 800 km that's kilometers I'm thought to have a comparable size with door planet Ceres making me the largest unnamed solar system object as of 2020 I'm one of the 10 largest trans-Neptunian objects currently known and large enough to be considered a door planet as shown I currently do not have any no moons orbiting me so an estimate of my mass cannot be made you see an observation in 2019 suggests i may be oblate in shape along a diameter on me i'm 2002 ms4 a large classical kuiper belt object let me tell you more i'm 2002 ms4 i belong to the kuiper belt beyond neptune i'm sure i'm 2002 MS4 A large classical Kuiper Belt object, let me tell you more I'm 2002 MS4 I belong to the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune, I'm sure I'm 28,978 Ixion Provisional designation 2001 KX76 I'm a large trans-Neptunian object And possibly a dwarf planet in the mix I'm 28,978 Ixion I'm located in the Kuiper Belt A region of icy objects beyond Neptune I don't think they will melt The outer solar system is where you'll find me In the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune I can be seen I was discovered in May in the year of 2001 By the CTIO That's how this begun I was discovered by the Deep Ecliptic Survey A project to find Kuiper Belt objects It's still going on today James Elliott found me He was an American astronomer I'm classified as a Platino, that is for sure. I'm 28,978 Ixion, provisional designation 2001 KX76. I'm a large trans Neptunian object and possibly a dwarf planet in the mix. I'm 28,978 Ixion, I'm located in the Kuiper Belt. Of icy objects beyond Neptune. I 
don't think they will melt. I was named after Ixion from Greek mythology. Ixion was the king of the Lepids, the most ancient tribe you see. Though my name is 28,978 Ixion, my provisional designation's 2001KX76, have fun. 440 miles, that's my diameter in size. I'm fourth largest Latino in the night sky. My color is thought to be red, and I may be covered in ice. Hidden underneath my thick layer of organic compounds, how nice. I'm 28,978XEON, provisional designation 2001KX76. I'm a large trans-Neptunian object and possibly a dwarf planet in the mix. I'm 28,978XEON, I'm located in the Kuiper Belt, a region of icy objects beyond Neptune. I don't think they will melt. Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. Provisional designations 2015 TG387. I'm nicknamed the Goblin now. Let's begin. An extreme trans Neptunian object in a said noid in the outer solar system is what I am. I can't avoid. I was nicknamed the Goblin because of the TG in my name and because I was discovered near Halloween in 2015. October 2015 was when I was discovered by astronomers at the MKO is how I was uncovered. My discovery was made by Chad Trujillo, David Tholin, and Scott Shepard, you know. I was discovered using the Subaru telescope they also probed with the Blanco 4M telescope looking out from the globe. 541,132. Lalia Kuanua is my official name. I have trouble saying it too. I never come within 80 astronomical units to the sun and I get as far as 2300 AU from the sun on my run. You think a year on earth is long? Well, mine is longer. I admit 35,760 is one year in my orbit. I have a very elongated orbit along with Sedna on my trek. Astronomers believe this orbit exists because of hypothetical planet X. I never come near the major outer planets astronomers have checked 541,132 Lalia Kuanua that's my name it is true my provisional designations 2015 TG387 I'm nicknamed the goblin now let's begin there's probably 10,000 small dwarf like planets in our outer solar system beyond Pluto now isn't that fun these dwarf-like planets are very small that makes them hard to uncover. With technology improving, you could be the one to discover. 541,132. Lalia Kuanua, that's my name, it is true. My provisional designation's 2015 TG387. I'm nicknamed the Goblin now, let's begin. I'm 20,000 Varuna, I'm here to teach you correct I was classified as a trans-Neptunian object I'm 20,000 Varuna, you can call me Varuna for short I am oval in shape, and I'm here to teach in report My name is 20,000 Varuna, I'm sure your eyes are transfixed My provisional designation's 2000 WR106 I was discovered in December in the year of 2000 by American astronomer Robert S. McMillan during a space watch at KPNO. I have an elongated shape 
due to my rapid rotation as shown I was named after the Hindu deity Varuna is my name, please say it back to me I'm 20,000 Varuna, I'm here to teach you correct I was classified as a trans-Neptunian object I'm 20,000 Varuna, you can call me Varuna for short I am oval in shape, and I'm here to teach and report. I'm a possible dwarf planet located in the Kuiper Belt. In the outer solar system is where my presence is felt. Info from my light curve says I'm a Jacobi ellipsoid. My elongated shape's due to my rapid rotation among the asteroids. My rapid rotation period is 6.34 hours. January 2001 is when it was first measured. The color of my surface is moderately red due to the complex organic compounds astronomer said. Water ice is thought to be present on my surface Because of past collisions I was exposed Now you're learning this No natural satellites have been recorded around me yet But in 2019 I may have a satellite astronomer suggest I'm 20,000 Varuna I'm here to teach you correct I was classified as a trans-Neptunian object I'm 20,000 Varuna You can call me Varuna for short I am oval in shape And I'm here to teach and report Shop our new store merch And get custom birthday videos With your favorite characters I am an exoplanet My name is Kepler 1649C I orbit a red dwarf Kepler 1649 You now see Exoplanets orbit outside Your solar system That's where I hide I am similar to Earth I'm spun Find out more when this song is done I was discovered in April 2020, the year, by the Kepler Space Telescope, and so we are clear. Jeff Coughlin, the director of SETI, said I'm similar. So far by the space telescope, Kepler at large, I'm about 300 light years from your Earth in the constellation of Cygnus for what that's worth. I'm identified as a rocky planet by NASA. My radius is 1.6 times that of Earth. I know that you're in awe. I take 19.5 Earth days to orbit my host star. Kepler 1649 is its name. The Red Dwarf. In charge, I am in the habitable zone of my red dwarf star. So far, this is known due to the lack of information on my atmosphere. It is unclear if I can sustain liquid water. On my surface around my sphere I am an exoplanet My name is Kepler 1649C I orbit a red dwarf Kepler 1649 You now see Exoplanets 
orbit outside your solar system that's where i hide i am similar to earth i'm spun find out more when this song is done i am an exoplanet my name is kepler 1649c i orbit a red dwarf kepler 1649 you now see exoplanets orbit outside your solar system that's where i hide i am similar to earth i'm spun find out more when this song is done My name is Four Vesta, the asteroid, one of the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt. Please enjoy. The asteroid belt is located roughly between Mars and Jupiter. I'm the second largest asteroid on the scene. I was discovered by German astronomer Hendrik Olbers, and that is for sure. In the month of March, in 1807, when looking. I was named Vesta after the Roman goddess of home and hearth. It was easy and flawless. I was named by the famous mathematician called Frederick Gauss. He was such a vision. I am one of the largest objects you should know. In the asteroid belt is where I glow. The asteroid belt is located roughly between the orbits of Jupiter and this is the second largest known asteroid by both mass and by volume. That's knowledge to enjoy. I'm the second largest two dwarf planet series, the closest dwarf to the sun in your solar system. See, my mean diameter is 525 kilometers or 326 miles if the metric system's unfamiliar. I'm the brightest asteroid that is visible from Earth, but not quite a dwarf. I need some more girth At a distance of 220 million kilometers From the planet of Earth For what that is worth NASA's Dawn spacecraft Entered orbit around me In the year of 2011 July the 16th Dawn stayed for a one year Exploration And left my orbit when it reached Its completion On the 5th of September In 2012 the smallest their names are spelled Ceres, Vesta, Paulus, and Hygieia that's enough about me yeah, I guess I will see ya my name is Four Vesta the asteroid one of the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt please enjoy the asteroid belt is located roughly between Mars and Jupiter I'm the second largest asteroid on the scene check out the new K channel with new videos every Saturday. I'm Kepler 186 F and Exoplanet I spin. Let's learn more about me and where I have been. Kepler 186 system is about 500 light years from Earth. I'd like to tout. In the constellation of Cygnus is where I reside along with four companion planets we don't try to hide. Kepler size and mass of your sun by far. I orbit my star in a Goldilocks zone where liquid could pool on the surface, don't you know? In a habitable zone, life might just exist on a planet like me. I'll tell you why this is. My distance from my star and my size and my mass are close to the same as the Earth's. We're almost twins with planetary class. This is why in Scientists were so excited with my discovery By the Kepler telescope and the transit method To spot my shadow you see and where I was headed I'm Kepler 186F and exoplanet I spin Let's learn more about
about me 